Good morning, class. Here we are again in uh, laboratory. So today's session is on malaria diagnostics. We're going to spend two hours, and we're going to look at uh, some gamesustained blood films. And I also want to show you this ra the rapid diagnostic test, the so-called RDT, that's now being deployed. And it certainly will be something that you'll come in contact with in the field. Clearly, with two hours of laboratory time, we're not going to make uh, expert microscopists out of you, but I still think it's important to spend some time with, uh, with your microscope looking at these smears and making sure that you can at least pick out what are pl uh, plasmodial parasites in the blood films and trying to get a feel, f feel for which characteristics um, enable speciation. The um, thing to keep in mind is that even though this rapid diagnostic test is now available in the U.S. and there are other versions available worldwide, uh, slide diagnosis does remain the, the gold standard for the diagnosis of malaria. Um, I'm also going to be posting a laboratory manual on the Blackboard that will have lots of very uh, good images uh, by species to help you understand the characteristics of the plasmodium parasite that you'll see in the microscope that aid in speciation. So I'm not going to try and show those images today using this means because it just won't project that well. Um, but I'm going to show you this. This is the Binax uh, test. It's actually now the company Binax was bought out by a company called Inverness. So I think it's marketed as the Inverness uh, our rapid diagnostic test for malaria. We'll talk about that in a second. For now, though, I want to show you how to make a blood film. The reason that this remains important is that it's important if you do have the rapid diagnostic test that you have the ability to actually corroborate the results with a, a blood smear. And secondly, um, the rapid diagnostic test is a qualitative test. It just says yes, no. Whereas with a blood smear, an accurately done and stained blood smear, you can actually get quantification. You can look at parasite density and you can monitor the patient's response to therapy. So having the ability to do blood smears serially as the patient's being treated, especially in areas where there's uh, uh, resistant falciparum, where you need to make sure that your patient is responding to the, to the antimalarial chemotherapy that you've uh, started, uh, mm -hmm. that's a very important thing. And malaria slide microscopy is the way that that's done. Okay, for starters, we're gonna, I'm going to uh, take a little uh, blood smear from myself. Um, and of course, the way to start things off is to um, make sure that the patient's uh, digit is uh, it's nice and clean. So we'll try and do that. And then we're going to take this nice little lancet. And is it okay? Mm -hmm. And here we go. This is always fun. And did I go deep enough? Well, so for starters, we're going to put one drop right there. Okay, is it showing up okay? And then the way you do this is you take your other slide and you back it into that drop, and as soon as you get it, you feather it out like that. Now, you can see there, that is a not well done <laughs> uh, thin smear. The reason that is not well done is that the slide was not adequately cleaned and the blood beat it up. It points out the importance of having very well cleaned uh, slides before you do this. The boxes of the slides that we have call themselves pre-cleaned slides, but they are not. They need to be do, uh, very carefully cleaned with alcohol. I, I tried to clean these with these um, finger wipes, and it didn't work out that well. But you get the general appearance of what the thin smear should look like. You want to have a single cell thickness layer at the feathered edge of the smear. Okay. Now that's the thin smear. If we were going to do things with a dual mount, what you want to do is also make a thick smear, okay? And then we're going to take a little more blood there and place it right 
on the, like that. And then we're gonna take our other glass slide again and we're gonna just make it into about a dime-sized uh, thick amount of blood. Now, of course, the amount of blood that you're looking at in this thick smear is gonna be considerably larger than the, the single cell um, thick layer on the feathered edge of the thin smear. And that's the power of the thick smear because we're going to then um, lice the red cells from there so that if there's parasites in those red cells, they directly adhere to the slide. Whereas we're going to fix the red cells on this smear, in the thin smear, to preserve the architecture of the individual red cells so that you can see the diagnostic features of the, uh, of the parasites in the red cell, okay? So what we would do now after this, we'd basically you kind of put the slide or let it air dry, but you want that thick smear to dry. And then what we will, would do is we would fix the thin smear in methanol, but we would not fix the thick smear, okay? So once this is fixed in methanol, the red cells are, remain intact so that when you then place the entire slide into the gheme sustaining solution, the thin, the thin smear cells uh, do not lyse, and then the, the gheme actually stains the parasite. Here on the thick smear side, the red cells will lyse, and the parasites actually are directly adherent onto the slide, and then they take up the gheme sustain, so you have a higher concentration of red cells uh, that were there, so you'll have more parasites. Um, but the architecture is different, so actually speciating based on a thick smear is uh, a much more uh, a subtle skill um, than looking at a thin smear. During lab today, I'd encourage you to try and take a look at thick smears. Uh, please ask questions of your, um, of your laboratory assistants who uh, are in the room. Um, but in terms of diagnostic features, uh, it's, you should focus on the thin smears, okay? Okay, so here's, the, um, here's the, the, the rapid diagnostic test, or RDT, for malaria. Uh, this is the product that actually recently gained FDA approval. Um, it previously had been made by this small company in Maine called Binax. Uh, they have subsequently been bought out by um, a company called Inverness. So it's now called the Inverness Now Test. Uh, and it's the ICT is the, is the generic name. So here's an envelope uh, containing the test cassette. So let's open it and take a look at it. Please note that it has a three May, uh, May of, nine, of 2003 expiry date. So any results of the, <laughs> are have to be said with the proviso that, um, that these reagents uh, are considerably out of date at this point. Okay, so here's the cassette as it appears. And if you open it up, it has uh, all these little pictorial uh, directions. Um, so we're going to be uh, applying blood to, um, to this pad right here and then placing reagent on this test strip. Um, and what happens is the blood is lysed and, uh, and then the, um, the blood then wicks up this test strip and embedded in that is um, is the uh, antibodies to the antigen, to the, um, the, the, par the parasite uh, histidine-rich protein. The, um, and you'll see the lines will appear, um, as it says on the front, if it's negative, then the control line will work. The control line will be of particular importance now since we're using a, a test that's actually six years out of date. If that control line does not appear, the test is invalid. If the control line appears and there's a line at the bottom, that's the Vivax line, then this is the falciparum line here. And then if you get both lines, that means it's a dual infection. Okay, so let's, uh, let's see if we can make this test work again, which of course means that I'm gonna need to stab myself again. And alcohol again. Let's see if I can find a different place. <laughs> okay. I 
Is that in the field? Doing this backhand. Do it that way. Let go. Yeah, I think it'll do it. So I need a nice big drop of blood. And then we need 15 microliters here. This nice capillary tube. Just a little bit more. Okay. So then we're going to apply the blood to the pad, and the directions say to cover this entire pad with blood out of the capillary tube. Looks like we've got it covered here. Okay. So then we're going to take this, uh, the, um, the wicking reagent, and the directions say to place two drops right here. One, two. And we're supposed to let that wick up all the way to the top pad. And then we're supposed to also apply four drops to this pad A. One, two, three, four. And the directions say that we should wait until the blood sample has run all the way up to that top pad. And then we're going to close the test. Now, this is, we can probably cut the tape <laughs> so we don't have to sit and watch. Okay, so we've waited here for a couple of minutes and the blood has wicked up to this top pad here. Now we're going to close it uh, with this pad. It will apply to that and then it will flush it back the other way and there will be lines there um, as the um, antigen is captured uh, by the ELISA. So now we've got it closed. Now we're supposed to wait 10 minutes. <laughs> you want to show the control? Yeah. Yeah, okay. That's, so while we're waiting for that test to, uh, to incubate for 10 minutes, I have some other results here so that you can actually get a feel for what we'll be looking for. Um, first of all, in a, this test hopefully will come out like this, which is a, the control line is, is there, so you know it's a valid test. But it has a line. Uh, well, actually, this one has possibly a very faint line in the PF. I don't know if you can see that. I can uh, get my pointer here. But there's a line right there. Um, so this may well be positive. This is uh, another uh, test that shows the control line and positive lines for both falciparum and Vivax. And then here is. Um, Here's another test. This says uh, it's actually from the CWEC clinic, which is in Nepal. Uh, and this presumably is a, is a, a patient sample, GC, uh, who is uh, positive for a mixed infection of, of falciparum and Vivax. So we'll see what, uh, what, our, um, what I have. <laughs> you can see the reagent starting to wick back and flush things out uh, here. But it, it needs 10 minutes to, uh, to incubate. So why don't we cut now? Okay, here we've waited a few more minutes. We're approaching the 10 minute point here, but this is gonna to continue to flush out. Um, and you can see that there's a positive control line here. So let me get my little pointer. So we've got the positive control line there. Is it showing up okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and then at least as far as we can tell right now, uh, Dr. Coyne does not have uh, Vivax or falciparum malaria today. Um, but I, I don't know how well these other uh, tests show that I've got here. Um, these will be available in the central area during the lab. So if you'd like to come and take a peek at these just to see what a positive test looks like, um, you, please do so. I'll also have the test box out. There's a few more test kits in there if you want to bust one open. Um, but there's not a whole lot of thrill there. It's basically this is what's inside there. 
So this is basically um, the, the new rapid diagnostic test that will probably be deployed uh, in pretty far forward settings by the time uh, you guys get out into the field as, um, as physicians in the military. Again, keep in mind that it's always important to try and corroborate these results with uh, a slide diagnosis. And in particular, when you're treating somebody, especially someone who has symptoms of severe malaria, you need to be able to watch that parasitemia count uh, respond to the antimicrobial therapy that you're administering. Okay, so that's all for today. Have, uh, have a good time in the lab and um, see you later.